parents are from the former Soviet Union from Ukraine, and, and I played hockey very competitively growing up, and, and you know, wanted to be a professional player. And um, you know, when I was a kid, I, I had a, a coach coincidentally in Chicago who was the first in, from the former Soviet Union to coach in the United States, and he really kind of changed the way I understood hockey and sport, and and opened my eyes to a whole new way of thinking about it. He was. You know, the training was was very unorthodox and and um, unusual, but also very, you know, fun and, and tedious, but interesting. And, and he encouraged creativity, something that wasn't really uh, done in the United States. And he, he encouraged kind of playing as a, as a unit together, kind of each line as a unit. And, and this really kind of inspired me. And then I wondered, and then I, I got my hands on a, on a VHS tape of, of Soviet Union played hockey in 1987, and, and I was literally, uh, I, I was spellbound, and I was also confused at the same time. I was spellbound because, you know, I, I felt that it was a profound expression of creativity, what they were doing on the ice. It was magical. It was something I'd never seen before. It was like almost a religious experience for me at the time, um, that kind of creativity, and, and I hadn't seen that. I was a little confused because I didn't know why the hockey wasn't played like that in the United States or in North America because it was so beautiful. Why, why were we doing this? You know, playing that way as well. So, you know, that that caused me to kind of get really curious about it. When, when I became a filmmaker, you know, I looked into the story of the, of the Soviet hockey team, and I found that there was a much bigger story than just the, the hockey team. It was the story of, of the Soviet Union, the people. You know, it was a story about. Uh, deep friendship and betrayal. It was a story about Russia and Russians and their relationship with the, United, with the United States and North America before and after the Cold War. It was simply, hockey was simply a window into a much larger story. I'm gonna try and uh, show my girlfriend the Stanley Cup Finals this year because I wanted to you know, teach her a little bit about hockey. She doesn't really know anything. And you know, when I turned it on, I, I, you know, I kept wanting it to be like, uh, the games that I used to watch on the VHS tape in 1987, and, and because they were making beautiful plays almost every play, that, that they touched the puck, they did something really special with it. And I think nowadays you see with the NHL games is maybe you know one or two good plays in an entire game. You know, as a filmmaker, you just look for ways to to, to tell your stories as effectively as possible. And, you know, sometimes that means you know finding footage that you know you, you wouldn't expect you would put in there in order to kind of bring out the character as kind of you saw in the movie. Some of it was sort of a happy accident. For instance, the KGB and his daughter, it wasn't actually his daughter, it was a girl that literally interrupted the, the shoot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it was a mistake, right. <laughs> and as soon as it happened, you kind of know that it's, that, that is special. I mean, I thought, Think, I always think that that scene is like kind of what this movie is about, totally in a way. Um, you know, taking the path and kind of twisting it a little bit, you know, um, and, and putting it in context, you know. I, I always found that interesting. But yeah, I mean, with, with, with these sort of playful elements, what Slava and I kind of came much later in the, in the editing stage, I just, I was trying to figure out ways to, to really help, help the audience understand who, who he was as a person. And, and, and you know, craft the story, and, and you just do, you just try to find ways to make things interesting. I had a researcher in the United States and Kent and uh, Russia who, you know, basically we, we would give them like lists of stuff that we're we're looking for. So I had to ultimately go to go to Russia. To they've got a couple archive warehouses there, and they store everything, film canister basically, and it's all manual, so they have everything written down in theory. So basically, yeah, I, I went to Russia, and, and, and they would basically look at, at, at these cards they had, and, I, and, and they, didn't, they themselves didn't know exactly what was on a lot of these film canisters. So I would, they would take them down, maybe 10 at a time, and set me up on a, on a table where you can view you know, the film footage. And then I'll look through, and ultimately it became slightly impractical, but I did find a lot of amazing things. 